Hello and welcome to I Can Science That. Today I want to talk about that infamous oblate spheroid that is the Earth. What I want to talk about is just how fat is this thing and can we verify that? I was having a really interesting conversation with a guy here on YouTube um, in a response to one of my videos. I'll put a link up top right there um, that so you can go read that conversation if you want in the full. I really want to just commend him on how he was civil and thoughtful and did this investigation for real, apparently. Um, I don't know where he stands. Uh, is he a flat earther? Is he um, uh, a regular globy? A, you know, just a guy who's curious. I don't know. But I do want to say that I really appreciate the way he conducted this conversation. Um, and it inspired me to make this video to answer some questions and raise some of my own. So here's a summary of that conversation with Righteous Revelation 13, where he points out that even though it's very small, 0.3% should be noticeable if you have a high enough resolution image. So he suggests that, it, you know, for example, if you had a 5981 pixel image, then 0.3% is 18 pixels. So that's measurable. That should be measurable. Uh, and I asked him for some links and he provided these four links. In this video, we will open each of those images and we will measure each one of those and see what we get. Okay, uh, I made uh, some alternate suggestions of some other images we should take a look at. I'll list those as well. Um, and then there's one more listed here that uh, Righteous Revelation has said that it, this one is round. He said all of the ones that he said are round. I'm going to measure them. And then this video, the purpose of this video really is to show how I measured it. And uh, then we can compare. Maybe you can make a video as well showing how did you measure it. And, you know, maybe we can figure out then if somebody's doing something different, that somebody's got some secret sauce that's making this work out right. Okay, these are the four links, and I'll have all these in the description below. These are the four links that Righteous Revelation suggested at first. I came back with three. Here's my three uh, suggestions that I chose specifically because they're high resolution. And then finally, here's one more from Righteous Revelation that we will look at. Okay, so I said we'd look at these. Let's start with the first one. Uh, this is from nasa.gov. Sounds legit. Am I opening it? Okay, uh, here we are. Uh, looks pretty good. We will just copy the image straight off of the website, and I'm going to drop it into GIMP. I use GIMP uh, because it's free. And I like to show off that everybody can do this kind of stuff. It doesn't take a lot of expertise, does not take a lot of investment. You can do it for free. So that's what I'm going to do. Okay, GIMP is free and it's going to let me drop that image right in there. Let's do this. I'm going to rotate this thing so that it looks as north to south as I can imagine. Now, you know, there's a picture of the North America right there. Yeah, it says Florida, there's Baja. I figure that's about north-south. Um, okay, yeah, there's Greenland up there. So let's try that. Let's measure this this way. Whoa, went a little too far. A little too far. This is pretty good. Okay, let's measure. That's not the measure tool. Here we go. Let's measure. I'm going to include the fuzz. At least some of it, okay. This should be pole to pole. So pole to pole, I get about 1642. What did I have before? 1642, yeah, that's good. Um, okay, so 1642 is what I measured and uh, just repeating myself because I'm going to edit this out. I see little specks. Oops. I see little specks out here. And I think these are stars, which makes me think this is probably a composite image. And therefore, 
I'm a little suspicious of this technique on this image in the first place. We'll discuss that. So over here, I'm going to start right there. And let's go measure it side to side. There we go. And I'm going to include the fuzzy halo edge. All right, what did I get? I got 1639. So the prediction was the Earth should be 0.3% wider at the pole, uh, at the equator, than it is pole to pole. This image, however, is actually slightly skinnier at the equator than it is pole to pole. About how much? It's uh, minus 1639. Three pixels. So it's three pixels divided by 1639. It is about almost 2%, I'm sorry, 0.2%. It is almost 0.2% taller than it is wide. And so that is definitely not matching the oblate spheroid prediction that we anticipated. Let's go on to the next image. Done with that one. Next image, here we go. What's this one? Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, this is a smaller image. It is from Epic. It is from the Discover satellite, but this is a lower resolution version embedded. Let's see if I can uh, see if it gets any higher resolution here. Copy image and let's pop it in here. Let's just measure it. What have we got? We'll go pole to pole again first. Again, I'm going to include this little fuzzy halo. Down we go. Okay. Uh, very pixely halo. I'll include it. Okay. And what did we get? 519. This is 519. Let's punch that into a calculator for later reference. 519. Not as high resolution as we would like. Okay, look at this. this I'll include these little stubs, these little single pixels that are out here. Just to be fair, certainly there's a margin for error in this, um, I think it would be fair to say we're at least plus and minus one pixel on either side. But what did I get? Uh, 521. So this one is wider than it is tall by two pixels. So two pixels, two divided by 521 is, okay, this one, according to this image, is about 0.4% wider at the equator than it is at the pole. So that matches um, the prediction reasonably well. Um, remember, I'm saying I'm within plus and minus one pixels of error. So really that 521, if we subtract two pixels, is 519. So that would make it perfectly round. But then again, I could be, I could say that the top to bottom was off by two pixels. It could be 521 top to bottom, which would make it exactly the wrong way around. So we're solidly within the margin of error on this image. Um, really hard to say much of anything off of that image. NASA.gov. Ooh, this is nice. This is, uh, yeah, this is, this is a, a good one. Let's take a look. Okay, what do we got? Copy image, put it into GIMP. So let's take a look. Okay, so right there we got 1082. As I did with the previous one, I'm including it. So keep that in mind if you want to, you know, debate how, how well did I do on this. Um, keep that in mind. Okay, so it is 1087 wide. How tall was it? 1082. 
So it is five pixels wider than it is tall. So five divided by 10, 87, I got about five tenths of a percent. Um, now that is too fat, right? This image is a little too fat. So what does that tell me? Well, the first thing it tells me is I was probably a little generous on the side-to-side -side pixels. If I, if I subtract one of those, uh, what do I get? If I subtract one of them, it would be only four pixels by 1087. And that would be even closer. What if I subtract both of them? What if I just cut off these ones that I said look like JPEG artifacts? And I do include this band. You probably can't even see the JPEG artifacts on the video. Um, so what if I, I take them both off? Then that would be three pixels difference now divided by 1087. And that's, you know, that's in the ballpark. Now it's just under three tenths of a percent. So what does this tell us? This tells us um, we're in the ballpark. We're in the ballpark, but we're still, you know, within the margin of error, really because um, what's the worst? I could say I'm gonna subtract both of those pixels from this, that's gonna take the side to side down to 1085. So the side to side would be 1085. And let's say within the margin of error, I was under two pixels on the top, top to bottom. That means the top to bottom is 1084. So now it's only one pixel difference uh, from width to uh, to height. What this tells us is the error bars, right? If we were to do this properly and we're going to draw the error bars, we would say that it's 85. That it is at least this much oblate, um, right? It's, it's, it's a tiny, it's one pixel oblate, definitely. That's the minimum. That's the, our error cutoff. And then the maximum error cutoff would be if we added two to this and subtracted two from the top. So that would be nine divided by 1089. And so that would be 0.8%. So we have seen this image is oblate somewhere in between the 0.1% and 0.8% range. And the 0.3% that we're looking for is right in there, is in there somewhere. So actually this image confirms the oblateness that we were looking for, you know, within our, within our error tolerance. Okay, now this one, this one is, is a great image, but it's a dinky version. Let me see uh, if, the, if we can get a, no, see, look at that. This, this is the, the full res image. That's dinky. We're not going to see anything from that, um, but we'll try. We'll do our best. This is from, you know, I should show the story. Um, this is from the Electro L, which is evidently the highest resolution image that has ever been taken, or at least it was as of 2012. Um, and actually it is, it's a 121 megapixel photo but this, this is just a thumbnail for this article. And so it, it, we don't, they didn't include the full resolution photo. And I've been having trouble finding the full resolution. If anybody, any viewers out there know where they can find the full res version, uh, or at least a higher res version, we can look at that with more accuracy. So as I zoom in, there's a lot of JPEG artifacting here. Um, I think that's pretty clear. Uh, zoom out a little bit, little bit, like I did for the other ones. Um, so how tall is it, top to bottom? These big fat pixels, easy to keep the line straight. Okay, now what am I going to include? Am I going to include that pixel? Let's include it. Let's try to be generous on the top to bottom. So what did I get? 264 pixels. I'll punch it in. It's just not going to be enough to to work with but we'll punch it in 264 pixels by by what now let's not include anything past this band i'll include that okay and here we go it's 264 pixels so it's 264 by 264 this one 
comes out as a perfect square. Now, what is one pixel out of 264? How much error margin is that? So if I'm, my measurements are off by one pixel, that is the 0.3% that we're looking for. So what that tells us is that this image, the source image we used here, is too low resolution to measure to this kind of accuracy. It means this one is no good to us. It doesn't, doesn't tell us anything. Here are my suggestions. Uh, what's this first one? Uh, I like this one because, ah, oh, yes. What I like about it is it's higher resolution. So let's grab this thing and stick it in here. This is something we can work with. All right, here we go. Let's measure. Measuring top to bottom again. Okay, how much of the fuzz am I going to include? Let's include right to there. Okay, it's a little dark down here, so I'm gonna include that last pixel. And what did I get? I got 1167. All right, I measure 1173. So, So six pixels, it's six pixels fatter than it is tall. Um, so what is that as a percent? It came out as 5% too fat, 5% too fat. Now, again, error margins, what if I'm off by, uh, by two pixels? Um, that would be only four, so let's say four divided by 1171 that would be right on our our, our target i guess um, so that's my that's within our error margin again so this one is centered right on the target let's explore the boundaries of the errors um, i measured uh 1173 by uh 1167 you can see it in the history here and here I measured 1173 by 1167. So what is the most perfectly round this image could be is if I was over by two on the 1173 making it 1171 and I was under by two making that 1169. So if it was 1169 tall and 1171 wide, that's a difference of two. So it's still not round. It's two by 1171, which is about 2%, I'm sorry, 0.2% too chubby. This earth is about minimum, at least 0.2% wider at the equator than it is top to bottom, um, uh, pole to pole. Uh, on the other side, what's the other extreme would be that it is 1165 by 11 no, yes, yes, uh, 1165 by 1174, 75, <laughs> 1165, there's the original numbers, I'm going to subtract two from this, I'm going to add two to this, so I'm saying I could be off by, right, I'm saying I could be off by a pixel on the left and a pixel on the right, so I'm off by two pixels, if it's the worst case scenario, then that would be 1165 by 1175, so that's a difference of 10, 10, 1175s is 8.5%, uh, 0.85%, I should say. I keep saying 8.5%, that's, you know, right? I hit the, is there a percent button on this calculator? No. All right, to, to make it a percent, you make multiply by 100, right? So that's it as a percent. 0.85% is the maximum. So it's somewhere between and it should be in my history here, somewhere between 0.17% and 0.85%. The number we're looking for is 0.3%. And yes, that's solidly in the error bars there. The question that was brought up, or you know, the, I don't know, I'll call it a, 
accusation, if you will, is that these images show the Earth is perfectly round. But this image does not. The perfectly round is not within our error tolerance that we just measured. There's no way this image is showing perfectly round. It can't. Uh, even with my two pixels of error on both sides, um, in, in the worst case scenario, the most roundness I can get out of it is that it is still oblate by 0.17%. Um, and uh, the, the maximum oblateness of this image is 0.85%. Let's do this one. This looks like it's going to be epic. So this is from the Discover satellite. I like this one in particular because it is always on the sun side. So you definitely, and any, any picture you get from Discover is fully lit. Um, and yeah, these are full frame images that are taken. They're, they're not composites in the sense of, you know, multiple frames were taken and then stitched together. These are, there's a satellite very, very far away. So 1549 by 1553 is four pixels. So it is four pixels wider at the equator than it is pole to pole. And as a percent, uh, 1553, that's 0.25%. Boom. Last one of my suggestions. Here's a Himawari 8. This one's a popular choice because it takes a high resolution full frame image every 10 minutes. There's always gonna be a sunlit shot at some point in the day. Now, as I zoom in, I wanna, uh, something really fishy, and this is something I want my viewers to help out with. This image has no artifacting, no fuzziness at the edge at all. There's no fuzziness there. I'm zooming in so you can see the individual pixels and how they stair step so perfectly. And there is nothing up here. It is just dead black. And that makes me suspect that there's a mask involved. Whoops, I went in a little too far there, didn't I? That there's a mask involved because there's no fuzziness. Okay, I got a little bit of JPEG artifact over here, but that fuzziness that was distinctive on all the other photos is missing here. That makes me think maybe this image is suspect. Maybe this is not proper. So if anyone knows about this particular shot, and I'll show that link again, um, where this comes from and why is that so crisp, I would love to hear that. So let's measure. Himori 8 pole to pole. Here's the bottom of our globe. There you go. And I have 5391. That's a good number. Let's go 5391. All righty. Now this side doesn't have a white edge. Look, it's blue. It's, you know, it's got that blue earth water that you're expecting um, right up until it's just suddenly black. So I'm suspicious. Okay, but what do we get? 5416 versus 5391. So minus 5416 equals, uh, make it negative. Uh, so 25 pixels. This is 25 pixels fatter than it is tall. And the height is 5416. I'm sorry, the width. The width is 5416. So that means this image is 0.46% too chubby, which um, is a little bit too chubby. 
So let's do our error bars again. If we subtract 2 from the width, it'll be 5414. And we add 2 to the height, that'll be 5393. So that would be a 21 pixel difference, right? Because it's a total of 4, right? So 21 pixel difference compared to the 5414. That would be 21 out of 5414 is. So the least oblate this image could be is 0.39. That is the bottom of our error bar. Now, what does that tell you? Now, look, if you were conspiracy minded, what this would tell you is that um, it's impossible. It's impossible that the image could be that oblate. And our error bars now don't include the actual number, which is 0.3. Remember, 0.3, not 0.39. Uh, so if you were conspiracy minded, you might look at this photo and instead of saying, oh, it's perfectly round, which is maybe what we expected to see, instead we're going to see it's too chubby. Um, but yeah, I kept saying I am suspicious of this image because of how crisp it is. That does not seem right. So if anyone knows anything about this particular image, let's show it again. It is the Wikipedia Commons image for Himawari 8 from August 21, 2015 at, 0, at looks like 0210 Zulu, looks like, yeah, 210 AM uh, Zulu time, um, if I'm reading that right. So, uh, you know, I don't know, maybe it is a JPEG, it's a high resolution image, um, it definitely is a good candidate for measuring because it is so high resolution. Okay, so, if you know anything about that image and why it is crisp on the edges, and also, why is it too fat? This, this image needs to go on a diet, so why is that? That is definitely it's something worth asking questions about. So if you're, you know, if you're suspicious and you're skeptical and you're going out and measuring these things, super, super applause to Righteous Revelation 13, who presumably actually measured these things. Now, you reported, Righteous, uh, righteous you reported that you got perfectly round on these. Um, and I think we've seen that most of these images are not perfectly round. Virtually every one of them is oblate. And we saw that. The ones you linked me were oblate. The ones that I linked you were oblate. Um, this last one that we're looking at here is too oblate. So this is really your complaint at this point should not be um, they're not oblate enough because this one is too oblate. We did find one of those images, the low resolution one, came back as uh, as round within our you know our first point measurement but it was so re low resolution that really it was so low that we the error margins um, are just too small to use that one this was provided by righteous um, and he measured this one and this is really the one that inspired me to do this video because I wanted to show how I'm doing these measurements uh, so you can follow along, you can do the same procedure, or maybe you make me a video and show me how you're measuring, um, and we can see, right? Uh, we can compare. So let's open that one. All right, there's definitely some image corruption at the bottom of this image. Uh, I'm gonna include that pixel. 875 top to bottom. Okay, what is it? Uh, 878. So it is three pixels fatter than it is tall. And what does three pixels amount to? Three out of 878. Bang, zoom, that's right on target. Um, so righteous, this is the image you shared with me, and you said you measured this one as well, you said it. You came in at I think at 1100. You, I'm sorry. You said 1,011 pixels. So 
you said that this one was perfectly round. It was 1,011 pixels. I just measured it. Um, I get only 878 wide, and it is not perfectly round. It is 878. Let's make a perfect circle and overlay it over this image and see, is it right? Through a whole lot of trial and error, uh, I have figured out that 21, oh, I gotta make my circle first, that 21, 11 is the perfect coordinates. And I'm gonna make it, we measured 878 wide. So I'm gonna make it the width of the circle. There you go. That is a perfect circle by the numbers. And hopefully these numbers are gonna work out to exactly match the edges. Let's get down there and take a look. Okay, so here's my, the dotted line is my circle. You can see it matches to the pixel on the globe on that side. How about the other side? Again, to the pixel, including this, you know, the, the weird fuzzy colors that you get at the edge of the image. That's included. Okay, so that's a perfect, that's a perfect match. Let's look at the top and bottom. At the top, we get a little bit of space poking through, a little blackness poking through the image. And if we go down to the bottom, again, just a pixel, just one pixel of space poking through the bottom. So what does that tell me? That tells me that um, you know, I got about two pixels at the top, I got about a pixel at the bottom. Yeah, it's not a perfect circle. This is what we mean when we say it is 0.3% oblate. You can see that the dotted line is the perfect circle. And as we go around here, we see that the, the little bit of blackness that exists down here at the bottom is going to start blending away. There you go. It's getting chopped off as we get around the side and we get to the, the area where the earth is the fattest. And then up we go to the top, it'll open back up again. And we'll see, sure enough, this image is of an oblate spheroid. So let's see the results. I have entered the numbers that I measured right here into an Excel spreadsheet, and I created a graph to show that visually. This is my results from the honest measurement of those eight photographs that we discussed. Obviously the zero line here represents the point when the, the photo is of an exactly round circle. So any measurements that are on zero are round. The green line that I've added is the accepted NASA dimensions for the oblateness, right? So that's what we're expecting to see that the planet is that much wider than it is tall. These numbers are in percentages. Um, and let's just look at these real quick. Number one, the first one, the oblateness was backwards. And then the, the vertical line, the blue dot is where the actual measurement was. And then the vertical line shows uh, what the limits are. If I, if I say there's a fudge factor of plus or minus one pixel at the top, plus or minus one at the bottom, plus or minus one at the left, plus or minus one on the right. That's two pixels top, bottom, two pixels left, right. That gives us some wiggle room on what it could possibly be. And that's what I'm showing with these, with these error bars. So the first one, the oblateness is backwards and the error bars do not encompass the accepted green value. The air bars barely just touch on the, the perfect roundness option. So the first one, maybe that's a perfect round picture. Um, it's definitely not oblate. Number two, number two, the measurement is exactly right. It's right on the line, um, but the air bars are fairly large. So the air bars encompass zero. So this one is inconclusive. Uh, number three, Number three, the measurement is, is quite close to the green line. The error bars do not encompass zero. So according to number three, we have an official oblate photograph right there. 
Here comes number four. Number four was very low resolution um, and just completely inconclusive. You can see the huge error margin on this one encompasses anything you could imagine. So that's, that's not helpful. Number five, number five, the measurement is close to the green line, which is close to the accepted value. The error bars do not encompass zero. So this one again says that it's oblate. Number six, uh, number six, the measurement very close to the oblateness uh, line. Error bars barely, barely touch zero. So you, you could say that one's inconclusive. That one's just barely inconclusive. Um, let's come back to number seven. Number eight is another inconclusive. Uh, the measurement is right on the expected value, but the error bars encompass zero. So um, let's go back to number seven. What about number seven? Number seven was the most precise value. You can see the skinny little error bars. However, the error bars do not include, they do not include zero, but they also do not include the accepted value. So that one is very suspicious. Um, of these, number one and number seven are extremely suspicious uh, and deserve further attention. Numbers two, four, six, and eight, inconclusive. Numbers three and five, the only not suspicious conclusive measure measurements show the oblateness um, as expected. Okay. So that's a, I'm gonna be honest with you, that sounds a little bit um, motivated there, right? The only two measurements that I don't like, I wanna throw them out. Uh, that's natural, and so we have to watch out for that being a bias. Is this a bias? What is wrong with number one and number seven? Um, I will remind you Number one was the photo where we saw stars in the background. So because I saw stars in the background of that image, before I even do the measurements, I am suspicious of that one. So it was flagged before we began. Number seven. Number seven was suspicious because it doesn't have stars in the background. It doesn't have any blurriness on the edge of the image at all. So because of that, I think someone has applied a mask to that and it seems as though they may have been a little overzealous on their masking. Um, so either way, anyone who has applied a mask to it, if that has happened, then um, that's no good for our measurements one way or the other. This was a rather long video, um, probably not all that interesting, but I just wanted to be complete with it. I will try to boil this down also to a a shorter version that's going to be more action-packed. Uh, but before I wanted to wrap this one up, there were a few questions that I had after doing these measurements. So um, I would like to ask any of my viewers, some of whom I know are very knowledgeable on this material, to help out with these questions. As we saw, many of these measurements uh, comport very well with the oblateness expected some of them rule out roundness and only allow some oblateness. But there were two specific exceptions. And those are this first image. This first image uh, is backwards. The oblateness is incorrect. And that's the one with the visible stars on it. So this is the link to the thing. Honestly, I've done uh, nothing yet myself to figure out where that image comes from. What is its pedigree? What sort of image is that? Is that a composite? Is it intended to be uh, presented as if it is a photo? Um, what, what are we looking at there? Do we have any reason to believe that the first link um, represents the correct oblateness of the Earth? The next question is about the number seven. Uh, here, this one, the Wikipedia Commons version of the Himawari 8 photo. Um, uh, that one, the problem is that it is too oblate. So it's clearly too oblate and the image is so sharp, there's very little re region for error, very little margin for error on that. Um, why is it so sharp? Why is it too oblate? If anyone knows about that particular image and um, I think a follow-up would be where to get good images um, 
good high resolution images to do this experiment with, we could repeat it with a handful of those. Okay, thank you very much. And I will try to get the shorter version out there. Be, be on the lookout for that. Um, although, if you've made it all the way to the end, maybe you don't need it. Okay, thank you very much, everyone.